Hello and welcome back to another Nerd Notes. I am your host, Brandon Hart. Uh, today, I want to spend just a couple of minutes, and I do mean just a couple of minutes, talking about this technology that is getting a lot of hype right now called Nabiat, or as some people might refer to it, NB. IOT, uh, also known as uh, LTE Cat M2, also known as Narrowband or LTE uh, NB1. And there's lots of names for this thing. So ultimately this is all referring to the same thing. So what actually is it? Well, uh, narrowband IoT actually gets its name from the fact that it only uses about 200 kilohertz of spectrum as opposed to most LTE technologies. Even LTEM is like 1.4 megahertz, but most of them are five to 20 megahertz of spectrum at a time. So you can fit this in between uh, LTE bands, the guard bands as they're called, uh, or you could use them independently. You can use them over top of existing bands and things like that. So it's because it's really, really small, very narrow amounts of band, you can send little tiny bits of information uh, on top of an existing network deployment. That's why it's so attractive. Uh, in order to do that though, there are some things that you have to compromise on. Um, so for one thing, the speeds are extremely slow. <laughs> I mean, we're talking very slow. Uh, this is less than uh, 50 kilobits per second types of slow. And we're also looking at something that is very high latency as well. So from the time that device attempts to try to send a packet to the time that it actually receives, is received at the other end, tends to be a long time. And exactly how long will vary by network implementation and so on, but we've seen anywhere from many seconds to, I think in one case it was, it was like minute uh, of, of latency. So crazy, crazy high latency. Um, interestingly, NB-IoT has the ability to run IP lists. So it may not necessarily have an IP address that it uses to access the internet. So that could be interesting. That's sort of coming soon. I, I haven't seen any actual real world implementations of that. Um, but uh, there may be a possibility where the IP address itself is actually assigned by the network once your device is able to kind of contact and, and use that NB-IoT connectivity to get the data into the cellular carrier's infrastructure. So could be really interesting implications in terms of power and, and uh, you know, how quickly you can turn things around. Um, but more than anything else, more than all of those things, you need to understand that NB-IoT is stationary. It, it, it is very specific to stationary use cases. If you try to make it mobile, it's not really inherently designed to work that way. It doesn't really roam particularly well. It doesn't hand off between cell sites. Uh, it just is not well suited for mobile use cases. And one of the ways in which it saves on power is to save its registration state from, from the previous registration. So uh, it doesn't, it's not very good at renegotiating those registrations either. So if you force it to do that, you're using a lot more power and you kind of lose the benefits. The other thing to, to bear in mind is that it, it uh, is very, very low power, sorry, uh, low bandwidth. And as a result, sending anything that has any sort of size to it at all can take a long time and end up actually using more power. So that's your quick rundown of the features and, and sort of the scenario in which NB-IoT exists, both today and coming soon networks uh, around the world. But uh, hopefully that was helpful. And until next time, like, subscribe, comments down below, uh, send us emails to workshop at nimblelink.com and uh, we'll see you next time on the next Nerd Note or full From the Workshop episode. Have fun building.